This video is all about using 30 day challenges to improve our health and wellness. So challenges are a very good way, a very effective way to make positive changes in your lifestyle. First, they help you build willpower, so self-control and self-discipline. They also help to kickstart good habits or break bad habits, and they help to build self-trust. Each time you complete a challenge, you prove to yourself that you are the type of person who follows through on your goals. And this self-trust then translates into self-confidence. So basically the benefits of doing 30-day challenges go way beyond uh, the direct impact that drinking green smoothies or taking cold shower can have on your well-being. It's also a way to build your character. And the mental strength you build during the challenge stays with you after the 30 days are over. So let's say you do one health and wellness challenge per month. After just a few months, you'll have proven to yourself that you can make healthier choices and you'll begin to perceive yourself differently as a healthy person. And then continuing to make healthier choices will be more natural because you always act in accordance to your beliefs, including the beliefs about yourself. So the first challenge I wanna talk about is the Whole30 program. This program is a pretty strict diet, but you won't starve. You can eat as much as you want as long as it's in the allowed foods list. Basically, it's whole foods with a few restrictions. For example, you cannot have uh, added sugar, uh, refined sugars or any added sugars, or dairy, alcohol, and I think grains are not allowed either. And if you have a sweet tooth like me, you can still eat fruits and dry fruits, or you can even make yourself like a banana and cacao homemade ice cream. All the information about the program and the full list of what you can or can't eat is on the Whole30 website. The second challenge is an idea that comes from the book The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. For 30 days, take a picture of everything you eat or drink before drinking or eating it. The goal of this challenge is really just to increase awareness of what you put in your mouth each day. By taking a picture of everything you're about to eat, you'll step out of autopilot mode and be more conscious of your eating habits. This challenge is a really good way to kickstart a healthier lifestyle because change always starts with awareness. We cannot change something we are not aware of. Next up is a green smoothie challenge. I've often heard that the best way to improve our nutrition is by adding more of the nutritious foods because then we automatically eat less of the bad stuff. And that's exactly what this challenge will help us to do. What's great with a 30-day green smoothie challenge is that you can continue eating whatever you want as long as you have one green smoothie per day. Your smoothie must include a green of some sort like spinach or arugula or kale. Like that's why they're called green smoothies. You can add any other veggie you like. You can add fruits and even nuts as long as you don't put uh, sugar or any other unhealthy ingredients. The next challenge is to practice the heart coherence breathing technique daily for 30 days. So our health and wellness don't just depend on our nutrition or exercise program. It's also about how well we manage stress. And the heart coherence breathing technique has been scientifically proven to help calm negative emotions like anxiety and anger and also build resilience to stress. So it's a really good practice to know, especially if you don't meditate. So this breathing technique is very simple. You just breathe in through your nose, counting to five, and then breathe out through your mouth very softly, like if you were blowing into a straw, also counting to five. And you repeat this pattern 30 times for a total duration of five minutes. It's best if you don't count as you do the breathing technique and instead just focus on your breathing. So I've created a video of a ball moving up for five seconds and then down for five seconds. I'll put the link in the description below. The next challenge is not a 30 day challenge because it's water fasting and it's probably not a good idea to do it for 30 days. It's actually the challenge that I'm doing this month. I started today. So it's very possible that you actually hear my stomach growling because I do hear it growling and my microphone is right there. So it's very possible if you hear uh, weird noises, that's what it is. So you have two options for this challenge. You could do a one day, so 24 hour water fast once a week for uh, four weeks, so for the entire month. So that would be like four times uh, one day water fast. Or you could do like a three day water fast or a five day water fast, or I'm doing a seven day water fast and do it all together, all at once. Water fasting is said to be one of the healthiest things we can do for our bodies. There's a lot of research on this topic and I'll put a couple of links to podcast interviews with doctors uh, that talk about the benefits of water fasting. So I'll put the links in the description below. 
but basically when you fast you activate what's called autophagy which is when your body gets rid of the damaged cells and regenerates new ones next up is a 30-day yoga challenge so yoga is a fantastic exercise. So first is one of the most grounding and one of the most uh, stress and anxiety relief practices we can do. Because when you do yoga, you really have to focus on your movements and your breathing and match your breathing to your movements. So it really demands that you are fully present. And by being fully present, we are forced to put our worries aside and it gives our minds a break. The second benefit is that the way we move our bodies during yoga squeezes our glands and organs, which helps to detoxify our bodies. And a third benefit is that it improves flexibility. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to become a stiff lady. So there are different types of yoga. The most common type, the one that you see most often in the yoga classes is called Hatha Yoga. Um, if you don't like this type, you can try Kundalini Yoga, which is completely different. Uh, it doesn't require flexibility or even balance. It's more oriented toward um, clearing the energy blocks in the body through breathing and very simple movements. The next challenge is another one that's going to be very difficult for me, and it's intermittent fasting. So according to many medical doctors, one of the best things we can do for our health is intermittent fasting fasting, which is basically to fast for at least 12 to 15 hours per day. If you can do more, it's even better. For example, you could eat between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and then have nothing, like no calories whatsoever for the remainder of the day. Many people choose to skip breakfast. For me, the challenge is that I tend to snack in the evening and in the morning I drink coffee and I just can't have it black. I find it disgusting black coffee I just can't so if I put milk in it like almond milk in it um, it's not fasting anymore so I find it very challenging but for 30 days I really do want to try it and I will simply skip the snacks the evening snacks anyhow it's good for us so I think we can all do it as a challenge for one month of course we had to include a meditation challenge meditation is one of the best stress and anxiety relief practices you can do. Basically, it trains you to dissociate from your thoughts and emotions. You still experience them, but you're not overwhelmed by them. So if you don't meditate already, maybe you can commit to do like 10 minutes of meditation daily for 30 days. Um, there are so many apps you can use. One app that I like is Insight Timer. I also have a 10 minute meditation class that I can offer you. It's about what I consider to be the easiest meditation technique it's also the most popular probably because it's the easiest i'll put the link in the description below and if you already meditate what you can do is to double your daily meditation practice for 30 days that's what i'll be doing next is a 30 day no sugar challenge so i listen to a lot of podcasts and according to many doctors excess sugar is one of the leading cause of cancer and many other illnesses and it's also uh, one of the things that contributes most to lowering our defense our immune system why is it so good i think that a good way to prepare for this challenge might be to watch a few documentaries like uh, sugar blues or fed up that explain the uh, negative impact of refined sugar or excess sugar on our health i really think it will help us to get motivated I would love to know which challenge you may want to try. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll see you next week.